Good morning. It's Tuesday, August the 11th, and I'm Aya Wimala, or Bikuni Wimala, and uh, I'm here in Illinois, outside of Chicago, way outside of Chicago, uh, not too far from Woodstock, Illinois, where Blue Lotus Temple is. So, hot summer day, downtown, uh, neighborhood in, near downtown Chicago had a tornado yesterday, last night, which is very unusual. So we're having, uh, you know, everywhere this weather is uh, different this summer, so something for us to pay attention to. Most days, nobody's, nobody's aware of the weather because one day is after the next, after the next, we've quit checking the weather every day. And now suddenly, people are back watching the weather so I hope wherever you are that you're doing okay with your weather and you are thriving, not just barely surviving, but thriving and paying attention to what's going on in the world because we know there are people suffering and there are beings suffering and we can always be sending our compassion to them and thinking of ways we might be able to help. So remember the people in Beirut remember all of the people dealing with hunger and dealing with um, just all of the conditions that are part of this world and feel try to feel as full of gratitude as you can for the life you have and think about think about others first and remember that's always going to help us put things into perspective the less it's about us and the more that we see that this is something all of us in this world are sharing right now, uh, one way or the other, economically, uh, physically, maybe you've lost someone dear to you. So always think about something beyond yourself and, uh, and let, that, let that help you feel joy and gratitude. Just in the fact that we're living this life and we're learning all we can from it. <clears throat> we will eventually get tired of it, so we just are able to let it go, right? So en enjoy it and learn from it along the way. I had a, a nice uh, information coming to me from Matthew in Washington, D.C., and uh, he's, he's interested as I know a lot of people are in doing a doing a book group with Pema Chodron's book Welcoming the Unwelcome and um, okay I'm so sorry I just needed to check volume and he also saw that Pema Chodron and another really good teacher with her they're doing uh, at the Omega Institute, O-M-E-G-A, Omega Institute, they're doing an online retreat on uh, welcoming the unwelcome. And I think it's in September, and I'll put the details up, and um, it's going to be an online retreat. I, Omega Institute, I think, is in upstate New York, and it's... Uh, it's a very well respected, uh, res I want to say a retreat center. And that's in September, and I haven't checked it out online, but he's, uh, Matthew also said that later in November it's going to be available. It sounds like it'll be available maybe on YouTube or it'll be available somewhere else, like the recorded retreat. So. Let's check that out and see. There may be there may be some way we can overlap her retreat and our book group. Um, the office was closed yesterday, so I wasn't able to sit down with Tessa and set up. Uh, just make sure I could have the Zoom space for a book group, but that's coming up soon. So. We'll do a book group on that, and I've got other books that I, I think may be shorter book groups. And Welcoming the Unwelcome is a is a is not a big thick book. I think we could do it, even make it be a one month, once a week book group, 
and then we can because it's not that uh, it's not that dense but it has a lot of incredible uh, wisdom for us so think about good times for you let me know so this morning I think right now and these days what we what we need to focus on is sitting together and sitting having some silence in our sitting but also you know a little a little bit of guidance because if you're if you are at home you may be feeling that it's harder to focus uh, it's it might be you might have a lot of things on your mind or a lot of frustrations and I think this is a frustrating time for all of us right and uh, we're trying to we're trying to be as normal as we can but we don't know anymore what normal is right and it's not a bad thing to see things change but usually as human beings we like to take that change we like to make choices about it and you may have been going through some very stressful times or just even if it's uh, even if it won't be real but that stress about how you're going to do uh, economically and how this is going to affect your work or your education I know those things worry people even before they become uh, an actual reality we can be anxious about them so I think we can practice when we practice metta or compassion towards ourselves that can be a great way to help us deal with that kind of anxiety um, I was talking to a friend yesterday and we were both laughing this is a great time to be older if you st if you're happy to stay isolated and safe and be more uh, you know staying away from situations where you could get infected with the virus then it's then it's uh, not so good but otherwise our kids are grown up we are we're, we're retired um, we we don't have all of the issues going on that a lot of you younger folks who are right in the middle of raising your family are facing and and my heart goes out for you so we'll do we'll do everything together that we can to just keep going and try 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 to see lessons in everything and uh, not see this as a devastating time but as a rebooting time or a time just to wake up to the things that we're we might be ready to let go of so we know if our daily intention if our daily resolve is renunciation that's that letting go and it's just simply letting go of the things that that no longer serve us well that are not helping us uh, be the person that we want to be might be letting go of old things letting go of old of old grudges towards people of old fears of old anxieties it could be letting go of have, worrying about having too much stuff or uh, thinking you need too much stuff but we often think it's about letting go of stuff and and a lot of times it is that can simplify simplify life a lot more but it's it's letting go of the things that aren't skillful for us that no longer work uh, it might be attachments to views or it might be attachment to uh, maybe people who are in your life but you know they're toxic and it might be time to let go of some of those attachments so that's renunciation and that's something we can be practicing all the time just look and see what is it in your life <clears throat> that's no longer working for you and it's holding you back from the direction you'd like your life to go into and then we're we're always wanting to do everything every day with loving kindness and that's having goodwill towards all living beings whether we know who they are or not and trying to also then the third one is to do everything as best you can with creating no harm for yourself or anyone else and I think more than we realize that's one 
we should be working on these days. And there are a lot of people who don't understand that uh, whether, we, whether we like washing our hands a lot, that doesn't seem to be a complaint people have, but whether we like wearing masks or not, <clears throat> if we're really concerned about being harmless in the world and moving harmlessly in the world, uh, we have to look at things like that and examine our behaviors. And doing harm to other beings can be anything like using too much, uh, too many pesticides in your yard. If you have, if you have insects, especially things like bees and uh, animals, that it can uh, be be. Uh, we can be killing animals just to have a beautiful, a beautiful garden. Uh, but it can be going as far as actually deciding not to wear a mask when we know we're going to be in a crowd of people. So we have to keep looking at those things. They seem small at first, but they can really help us make a lot of the decisions we need to make in our lives. So why don't we let me start by reading my wish and I'm sure everyone's got it memorized now. And uh, if, if you haven't, check out having a copy of the St. Francis prayer, St. Francis of Assisi prayer, because it's, it's just a parallel with my wish. May I become at all times, both now and forever, a protector for those without protection, a guide for those who have lost their way, a ship for those with an ocean to cross, a sanctuary for those in danger, a lamp for those without light, a place of refuge for those who need shelter, and a servant to all in need. By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the unwise, only the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. So why don't we sit and then we'll end the way I usually do. I'll, I'll read my wish again and if you can continue sitting, your body should be relaxed and ready to sit longer and uh, hopefully you're feeling your practice lengthening with, this, with more time spent at home. It's, I know it can be hard if you've got things you're concerned about or uh, worried about, but it's really important for us to use this time also to lengthen our practice time or to find more times during the day, maybe very short times, but times when we can just be silent and just go within. Don't even call it, uh, my friend set says she likes to call it, just pause and let that, that talking about pausing can take away the feeling you may have of, oh, I don't have time to meditate. I can't, I can't sit still or I don't have a place that's quiet. Just think of taking as many pauses as you can during the day. Checking, checking how you're breathing and just giving yourself even a moment or two of stillness. and just be with yourself and let that be the ground. If that's, that's your base, that's perfectly okay. Close your eyes if you're able to. And even if you're in bed or on your back on the floor, walking, anywhere you are, any if you're outside, that's really wonderful. Just feel your body lifting up, lift up from your waist. So you can feel your spine being as straight as your body will allow it to be, but let it support your body so you can be really comfortable when you're sitting upright or when you're allowing that spine to be lifted up. 
let, let one of your hands touch your belly. And as you observe your body breathing, when you can feel your belly extending out a little bit as you inhale, and then as you exhale, feel it contract, then we know we've been teaching our body little by little to give us to breathe more deeply. It's healthier for us, but it's also helping us calm down because if we're not calm, our breathing stays at the top of our chest, right at the top of our lungs. We're not, we're not allowing our body to give us the best as a natural breath. We want to train our body to take in the oxygen and let it go down, just let it move down into our lungs. You can let the focus of your practice be on that breath in your belly. Or you can practice being aware of the sensations of your breath around your nostrils but pick a spot and stay with it. Let's just be with our breath. just observing our body breathing. So don't be forcing your breath. each exhale, feel your shoulders just go down a little bit. Just let the, let go. Relax your body.
if your mind begins to wander, you're chasing after your thoughts, and just bring your attention back to your breath each time you notice that you feel distracted or a thought comes up and you just can't resist going with it. Just gently but firmly bring your attention back to your breath. To the spot that you're staying with. Either the awareness of your belly moving gently or the sensations around your nostrils. You can imagine a little butterfly at the tip of your nose or maybe on a finger that's touching your belly. Let that butterfly be your position, just observing the breath. It's very light, so easy to easy to cause your butterfly to lift up and fly away. But we can train it. Those thoughts we fill our head with are not who we are. The Buddha always told his students those things that are caused that arise from conditions. They are not, not me, not mine, not who I am. So it's okay to let those thoughts go. Let them go for now. Just be aware that they rise up on their own. They'll wait for our attention for a while, and if we don't give them the attention that they're demanding, they'll eventually go away. They may come back over and over, but they don't have to keep coming back right now, right at this minute. Just keep coming back to your breath. to become aware of the nature of this body. of our feelings and our thoughts.
May I become at all times, both now and forever, a protector for those without protection, a guide for those who have lost their way, a ship for those with an ocean to cross, a sanctuary for those in danger, a lamp for those without light, a place of refuge for those who lack shelter, and a servant to all in need. By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the unwise, only the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. So keep sitting, even just give yourself a few more minutes, and I'll see you Thursday. Okay, have a beautiful day. Have peace.